Good evening, children. It's Granny Macduff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. There once was a man who had three sons. The youngest was called Dumbling. He was disliked, mocked, and put down on every possible occasion. One day, the man's eldest son decided to go into the forest to cut wood, and before he left, his mother gave him a beautiful cake and a bottle of cider so that he may not be hungry or thirsty. When he entered the forest, he met a grey-haired man who bid him good day and said, Do give me a piece of cake and a sip of cider. I am so very hungry and thirsty. The young man replied, If I were to give you my cake and cider, then I would have none left for myself. Be away with you. And he left the little grey man and went on to find wood to chop. It was not long before he found a good tree and began to cut. But he made a full stroke and cut his arm with the axe so that he had to go home to bandage it up. And this was all the little grey man's doing. After this, the second son went into the forest. Just like the eldest, his mother gave him a sweet cake and some cider to take with him. When he entered the forest, the little grey man appeared and asked, just as before, for some cake and cider. The young man said, What I give to you will be taken away from me. Be off with you. And he left the little grey man and went on to look for a tree. His punishment came quicker than his brother's. And as he took his first few strokes with the axe, he lost his balance and cut himself in the leg, so he had to limp home. Dumbling said to his father, Please, do let me go and chop wood. But his father shook his head and told him, Your brothers had both hurt themselves doing it. Leave it be. You understand nothing about it. But Dumbling decided he would set out and cut wood anyway. His mother gave him a cake made with water and baked in cinders and a bottle of sour ale. And when he came to the forest, just as had happened to his brothers, he was met by the little grey-haired man. He greeted Dumbling and asked, Do give me some of your cake and a sip of your ale, for I am so hungry and thirsty. Dumbling replied, I have only cinder cake and sour ale, but if that pleases you, let us sit and eat. So they sat, and when Dumbling pulled out his cinder cake, it was a beautiful sweet cake, and his sour ale was no longer sour, but had become good cider. And so they ate and drank, and when they had finished, the little grey man said to Dumbling, You have a a good heart, and you are willing to share what you had. Because of this, I will give you good luck. There stands an old tree. Cut it down and find something at its roots. Then the little man took his leave of Dumbling, who went and did as the man had told him. And when the tree fell, he found a goose sitting at its roots with feathers made of pure gold. He lifted her up and took her with him to an inn where he thought he would spend the night. The innkeeper had three daughters who were very interested to know more about the goose and would have liked to have one of its feathers. The eldest of the girls thought, I shall find an opportunity to pull out a feather for myself. And as soon as Dumbling had turned away, she grabbed the goose by the wing, but her fingers remained stuck to the feathers. The second sister came not long after. She too was thinking how she could get a feather for herself but she had scarcely touched her sister when she too was held fast. The third girl came with the same intent as her elder sisters, but they screamed, Keep away! Keep away! For goodness sake! Keep away! But the girl did not understand why she must keep away. Well, my sisters are there, she thought. I may as well be there too. So she ran to them, and she stuck fast to her sister. The girls spent the night with the goose, and although they tried... They were not able to break free. The next morning, Dumbling tucked his goose under his arm 
and set out toward home. He did not trouble himself about the three girls who were hanging on to his goose. The sisters were obliged to run after him and turn left or turn right. They had to follow Dumbling's every move. In the middle of the fields, they met a parson who exclaimed, Shame on you girls! Why should you run across the field after this young man? It is not seemly. At the same time he said this, the parson seized the youngest girl by the hand in order to pull her away, and in all but one second he was likewise stuck fast to her and was himself obliged to run behind Dumbling, his goose and the sisters. Before long, the parson's steward spotted him running and shouted, "'Good sir, good sir, where do you go so quickly? Do not forget, we have a christening today.' And the steward grabbed the parson's shirt sleeve and he too was held fast. While the five trotted behind Dumbling and his goose, two farmers met them on the road. The parson begged the farmers to set him and his steward free, but when the two men tried, they too were held fast. And so the line was now seven. Not long afterwards, Dumbling came to a large city where a king ruled who had a daughter who was such a serious girl, no one could make her laugh. So the king had put forth a decree that whoever could make his daughter laugh should be worthy enough to ask for her hand in marriage. When Dumbling heard this, he took his goose and her train to the palace and brought them in front of the king's daughter. And as soon as the princess saw the seven people running on and on, Around and around, one behind the other, all crying out behind the goose, she began to laugh quite loudly. She laughed so heartily, it almost seemed that she would never stop. Upon this, Dumbling asked the princess to marry him, and she happily accepted. They were soon married and lived happily ever after. The And now it's time to take a deep breath and close our eyes so that we may drift off into a world of our own adventure. Good night, children. <laughs>